Hello friends. I've been talking a lot about the animate tool recently and today is no exception. So today I want to show you five ways to add animation keys in OpenTunes and to Homer 2D. Number one. So let's start off with the set key button below the viewer. That's this button just here. So click this and you get a key with the values set at this position, which at the beginning of an animation is just the initial position. But it's useful later to be able to add a pause to the movement, as I'll show you in a minute. But notice that when you press the button, it shows a solid diamond, which means that every channel has a key in it. So if I go to the function editor in the schematic room and show every channel here for this column, you'll see that there's an orange key in each of these channels. That's the X, Y, Z, stacking order, position, rotation, scale, and shear options. And if I press it again, all those values disappear and the key disappears from the X sheet and from the timeline. And it's useful to have the function editor on screen when you first get used to using this tool so you can understand what keys are being added and to help you diagnose when your columns aren't moving as you'd expect. Number two. Next, you can just drag the drawings in your column. So select the animate tool, choose the edit type, and then start dragging on the screen. So I could place position one here, move along a few frames, and then move this up. And you'll see the two keys are added in the X and the Y channels only, not in the rest of them. As I move between those two keys, you can see the movement just there. And this is likely the most common method to add an animation key, and you're probably using it already. But I would also suggest that you try out the all option, because it's really useful to be able to move, rotate, and skew with the one tool. So if I move the center point, I can rotate with the top selector there, scale it here, and as I change each value, you notice the keys being added in the relevant columns. So do notice that the key button below the viewer is showing the diamond half filled in. And this is because we haven't got keys in every channel. And because of this, you might want to click the button to add a key in every channel, which sets the initial key for any that aren't yet set. Because if you later change their value, so if I go to a few frames later and then move this, the interpolation happens between this frame and the previous key. So if we then go a couple more frames and change the movement, the interpolation happens between frame 12 and nine, as you'd expect. But if I now rotate, the interpolation happens between the current frame and the previous key, which was two movements ago on frame five here. And this is something that I've seen new users get confused about all the time, which is why it's useful to have the function editor on screen in the beginning as you get used to adding the keys. Or if you want to add a key to each channel as you make any edit, then tick the global key tick box at the far right hand side of the options toolbar. And now we have some movement, I can show you how you'd use the set key button to create a pause. So if you move from the last key here and add a key across all the channels and then go forward a number of frames and press the button again, now you'll notice there's no movement between those last two keys. So you've got some movement, some rotation, some position changes, and then a pause between those last two keys where you've pressed this key button. Really useful for creating a pause in your movement. Number three. Next, we'll use the options bar. So you can just click and type values into the boxes on the options bar here, which isn't necessarily useful for movement, but can be if you're copying and pasting values from another column and you want them to keep in sync. But for rotation, it is really useful to be able to set a rotation to say 45 degrees, 90 degrees, or a known angle. So if I move on a few frames again, and then in the rotation box, I can just type in zero and press enter to set the rotation to zero. And again, move along a few frames, either on the X sheet or timeline, or directly in the function editor, and then type a new value into the rotation box there of 45 degrees. 
But where these boxes are really useful is to reset values. So for instance, the X and Y position, if I set them back to zero each, that will be the initial position that the drawing was in on frame one. Number four, and while we're looking at the options bar, you probably didn't know that the labels to each value are also secret buttons. So you can do two things with this button. First, if I move along a couple of frames again, you can just click on the button here where it says X and it adds a key for the X channel. And again, for the Y, Z or rotation. And again, this could be useful just to create a, a hold key for this one channel. Or you can actually click and drag on the label there. So I can click on X and drag to the left to move it to the left slightly. Click on Y to drag it to the right or for the scaling here to make it larger or smaller. And this can be a really good way to adjust the value while looking between the value in the box and the position here on the viewer. Number five. Finally, you can add a key directly in the function editor. And again, for angles, this is perfect. So all you need to do is to double click into a space and you'll see the last number for the key. So you can just overtype your new number and press enter, which adds a key there. Or you can double click in the cell and simply press enter to duplicate the key and create that pause between keys. And if you want to, you can move in between the keys here, double click, and then again, press enter to create a key. Or if you want a different value, you can double click between the keys and simply type in a new value again and press enter and you'll get a key of that value. So that's five ways to add and edit animation keys. Do try them all out and get used to how they work. I use all five at different times. They're all so, so useful. And thanks to all my Patreon supporters for all of your support. And don't forget that my T-Mug and Teapot supporters not only saw this video a week early, but can also download this and all of my previous projects to try out these different options. And if you'd like to see more about using the Animate tool, then you find this video here really useful. And now see you next time for another tutorial. And that's a guarantee.